Thanks, Jonathan, and good evening, everyone, and thanks to um, Greenpeace for the opportunity to be with you this evening. I want to base my um, introductory remarks around this report that was commissioned by Beyond Zero Emissions a couple of years ago, published exactly two years ago. They asked us to look at um, and review the international and Australian literature in the, in the health and medical literature, so the evidence, the health evidence about the effects of coal mining and coal combusting power stations on the health of local communities and on social justice in lo local communities. So we actually looked at the world and then at the Hunter, they were interested in the Hunter Valley in particular, so we looked at the literature from around the world and then um, in other parts of Australia and then the Hunter Valley, and also we divided the evidence um, on coal and health into the effects from um, extracting coal from coal mines and the effects from living near a coal-fired power station. So there's no occupational health and safety, this is all about people living in the community. So we had four research questions. The first one was what if any diseases or other health problems are associated with coal mining in local communities? And there's quite a lot of evidence from around the world from 13 countries, um, including Australia, but I will, I'll tell you what's wrong with the Australian literature in a minute. Um, and some of those um, health harms, so the health harms associated specifically with coal mines, uh, we also separated adults and children. So with adults, it's higher rates um, of death from lung cancer, chronic um, heart, respiratory and kidney diseases, higher rates of cardiovascular disease, higher rates of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and other types of lung disease, higher rates of hypertension and kidney disease. Increased hospitalisation rates um, for hypertension and for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Poorer self-rated health and reduced quality of life for adults. And we know that poorer um, self-rated, poorer health and quality of life is actually quite a good indicator of actual health from other studies. <coughs> Pardon me. In children living near coal mines had re increased respiratory symptoms and um, absence from school, but that wasn't so in all studies. So some studies showed uh, no difference. High blood levels of heavy metals like lead and cadmium, higher incidence of any birth defect at all, and a greater chance of being of low birth weight, which is a risk for obesity, uh, diabetes and heart disease in later life. In terms of coal-fired power stations in adults, um, living near coal-fired power stations had an increased risk of death from lung, laryngeal and bladder cancer, um, increased risk of skin cancer other than melanoma. So melanoma was no different, but all other types of skin cancer were at higher risk if you lived near a coal-fired power station. Increased asthma rates and respiratory symptoms. But children, infants and uh, fetal outcomes um, showed the reports of oxidative DNA damage and that is a risk for all sorts of um, future diseases, heart disease, neuro, um, neurological disorders and um, arthritic conditions and a whole range of things. Higher rates of premature birth, um, higher rates of low birth weight, higher rates of miscarriages and stillbirths. Um, impaired fetal and child growth and neurological develop development and increased rates in, of asthma and respiratory symptoms, again, not in all studies. So the next research question was to ask if there are any clusters of the d these diseases or other health problems in the Hunter region of New South Wales. Um, and the fact is we don't know. So there are some New South Wales health reports. They weren't designed as studies. They are collected from GP data about um, accessing GPs for coughs and wheezes and stuff, which are fairly inconclusive. They show a bit more in some areas and not, no difference in others. And the three Australian studies, I mentioned the Australian studies before, were done over 20 years ago, and I think they are now completely irrelevant. So we have no data here, and this is undemocratic, given the calls from communities, local government, and professional um, health groups about needing to find out what, um, what are the risks for people living near coal mines and coal-fired power stations in this country, and in the Hunter Valley particularly, they're in closer proximity to human habitat than elsewhere in Australia. So research question three was about social injustice in local communities, and um, there was um, not very many studies of this, so you hear lots of, um, lots of reports like John just talked about, and they're very real, but to get into the health and um, social literature as evidence, it has to be published in a journal and peer reviewed and so forth. <clears throat> so I don't want to talk about these things uh, terribly much because I'm sure that Richard Dennis will actually talk about, particularly about things like the cost of damage, being uh, environmental damage and so forth, being largely borne by the um, community and society rather than the industry. All sorts of asymmetries of power, you've already heard those from John as well. 
And then the fourth question was about is there an association between coal mining and social injustice in the Hunter region. So if you look at this, this is a photo of, of, of the Hunter region, of part of the Hunter region, and if you look at this, um, it, which is also a photo of part of the Hunter region, and think that in the Upper Hunter alone, um, I think the Upper Hunter is actually probably the most intensive coal mining area, um, up until a few years ago, and it's probably more now, there's about 16% um, of the land surface was taken up with open cut mines. Um, so, I mean, you know, where you live, um, you know, what your environment is like affects your health. So obviously there are effects um, and all these asymmetries of power and um, uh, greater claims on water rights by the mining industry. And um, not, still no self still no um, independent monitoring of air quality. The industry still monitors the air quality itself. So all of this is pretty undemocratic. And if you look back just back to the general international literature um, and, and from the individual studies that we, we reviewed, I certainly would agree with this, that each step of the coal life cycle, extracting it, transporting it, washing it, combusting it, and disposing of uh, post-combustion waste has impacts on human health. And yet, despite this international literature, we don't know what it does here. So we can't really say that all the things that I've mentioned um, in the international literature happen here because mining practice is different, regulations are different. On the other hand, it would be absolutely irresponsible to think that some of them don't, and it is absolutely irresponsible that we don't have these studies at this stage. Thank you.